Exercise can do a bunch of great things for your body and brain, like improve your mood, boost your energy, and help you sleep better. In fact, it can even help you manage type 1 diabetes. But exercise is a double-edged sword. Worrying about hypoglycemia may make you nervous, and that's totally normal. Just like running a marathon or lifting heavy weights, without proper training can be dangerous. You have to learn how exercise affects your blood glucose levels to make sure you don't put yourself at risk. In general, any sort of muscle movement takes energy, so any exercise will increase the demand for glucose, and your cells will use up glucose as you work out. If you exercise regularly, your blood glucose levels will swing a lot less dramatically because your body adapts to the ebbs and flows. Now, it's important to remember that exercise means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, from light stretching to triathlons. So to really understand how exercise affects a body with type 1 diabetes, we need to break it down into different categories. High-intensity exercise is anything that involves explosive bursts of effort, like sprinting, weightlifting, or many team sports. You may not be doing these things for hours on end, but your muscles will be working hard while you are, and they'll let your body know that they need fuel for that energy. As your heart gets pumping thanks to a hormone called adrenaline, your body will release the extra glucose it needs from energy stores. This means that you may find your blood glucose levels are high after high-intensity activities. Often, your blood glucose levels will settle down as your adrenaline wears off, but some people might need to steer them off slightly with a small correction dose of bolus insulin. Be careful with any corrections, though. Exercise that really works your muscles makes them super sensitive to insulin, your muscles will be sucking up glucose with even small doses. Basically, this means that for around 6 to 12 hours afterwards, you may need around half the bolus insulin you normally take. It's easy to overdo it, and your blood glucose may swing low, so small adjustments are the safest bet. You'll need to experiment to figure out what works best for you. Start small. You can always add more insulin next time if it wasn't enough. On the other end of the spectrum, low-intensity exercise is anything that gets your blood pumping but doesn't necessarily lead to burning muscles, like going on a walk or hike, cleaning your house, or even a long day shopping. With these low-intensity activities, your muscles often need fuel for longer periods of time, so your blood glucose levels will gradually fall as your cells use it up. Even for low-intensity exercise, planning ahead is important to avoid hypoglycemia. For example, you might take slightly less insulin before the preceding meal or eat some carbs right before the activity. Try 20 grams to start. For longer workouts, you might need to top up the gas tank by having a snack during exercise as well. Or if you have an insulin pump, you might temporarily reduce the basal rate by around 20 to 50%. Your workouts may fall somewhere in the middle of high intensity and low intensity exercise because these aren't perfect categories but you can use them as guidelines whenever you're learning about your body. The key to balancing your blood glucose levels is experimentation and not giving up. Just like exercising gets easier as you make a habit of it, building healthy type 1 habits into your routine gets easier with time. Plus, as you exercise regularly, your blood sugar levels will be steadier. A win-win. Three key takeaways. All exercise requires energy, and your cells will demand glucose. So pay attention to your blood glucose levels before and after exercise, and more regular exercise means more regular glucose. Vigorous, high-intensity exercise can cause blood glucose levels to spike, but it's good practice to not adjust during your workout and be careful with any correction insulin doses as you may go lower. Cardio and low-intensity exercise can cause low blood glucose levels during or afterwards. So it's good to plan ahead and make sure your body has some extra fuel before or during your workout. We hope you found this episode helpful. Thanks for watching.